new release this week. New truck, new platform, everything. So this is the new VRD Carbon. It's a competition-based or high-performance-based kit. And it is a kit, not an RTR this time. Uh, we've had some RTRs out here recently, but this one's for the builders. So it's pretty exciting. It's something that we've been working on for quite a while. And, you know, we've been itching to get these out. So now it's finally here. Close to two years. Yeah, close to two years. <laughs> so the uh, I've got mine here that I built, well, freshly built here. And underneath of it, it's a carbon fiber frame rail style. It's got the VFD transmission, standard VFD, It's basically ready for a class two type build. So it comes with the F10 portal axles. It's got a new servo on axle mount that uh, you, you know, converts it to a four link as well. But also it's a kit, but it's a super high spec kit. Kind of like we did with, we did the original Pro, the VS410 Pro. It's got all the good stuff. It's the lightweight machined gear set in the VFD twin. We released that month ago, month or two, month or two ago. Uh, that that was you know made for this truck when we initially started, uh, you know, doing those gears. It was for this. So it comes with those lightweight machined gears, the lightweight machined motor plate, the aluminum uh, posts for the VFD. Granted, there's only one post installed. There's also a new tray that replaces one side of it. Both posts are included though, if you. If you want those but low center of gravity uh high clearance rear lower links it's got 37 percent overdrive out of the box uh when now it's available it's in stock it's on the website so you can pick them up immediately and uh yeah that's the that's the big part of it lots of details we'll go over all those today kind of answer as many of your questions as we can try and get you guys all the info though i also have another video that'll come out here in a little bit after it. Um, so you'll see more of it there if you want an edited, you know, version of it. But carbon fiber frame rails, that's the matte carbon. We went back and forth on the matte versus shiny or glossy. And we kind of all just took a vote around the office and I think that looks better. It does. The matte is is a just a good looking carbon. So we ended up going that route. The body mounts on it, super adjustable, work with it doesn't come with a body. No. Uh, wheels, tires, body, or electronics. So uh, it's kind of a builder's kit in that way. Uh, I finished mine out here with the VXT2 tires. I've got the two-stage foams in there, and then I've got some KMC impacts mounted up on there as well. So 475 tires, you'll be able to clear no problem. I cut up a ProLine cliffhanger for mine on this one drops right on it does come with the aluminum sliders also so sliders go on there match the width of a body like a cliffhanger super close so you'll see that they're aluminum so you'll get metal points if that's what you're after the hopefully we got the youtube one correct to see that people are on the youtube so facebook and youtube in the comments so. fantastic at least i didn't screw that up this should way. i just ask a question before i know they're all going to ask questions yeah <laughs> but josh you hate flat rails it's because it's not a scale truck this is not competing with our four dice things like that it's a, it's a performance or a comp based this is actually the truck that uh, you know brandon and i have been running for almost two years well a version of it we went through lots of little iterations of it. i've cut a lot of carbon fiber rails over the last couple of years for us to us to keep fine tune fine tune and adjust here and there my comp my comp truck's been on the shelf in here since we started the the live show in here and that's basically it's pretty close to this final truck you guys have been also driving these around people that didn't know well yeah you know it's because in the end carbon fiber rails things like that it, there's a lot of options out there and this is just a, an all-in-one it's got a nice instruction book so Everything you need is is covered. Uh, what does the kit weigh? This truck here, complete with a battery in my body, is at five pounds seven ounces. But that I do have brass inner clamp rings up front. Oh, you know what? We should show also. Oh, got a second one there. This truck also comes with knuckle weights out of the box. So this is a new uh, knuckle weight. It's a, a cast version. So it's a little bit lighter than the brass 
but it's the same design pretty much as the low offset brass weight. These are 65 grams each. The brass of the same design, I think is like 86. So super close, um, but it just gives you a little bit of weight out of box to keep the you know the front end down a little bit more. That was something that we, we added there towards the end of tuning, just to try and make sure that the out of the box experience was as good as possible. Weight is still mounted on the chassis and servo. So yeah, the, the chassis will still support chassis mounted servo setup. Uh, and we'll actually have just a full kit that you can use for that. But the whole spacing <clears throat> on the side of the chassis, if you wanted to do it ASAP, you could pretty much just grab our pan hard mount that we use from the VS410, as well as the servo uh, cross brace that we originally made for the VS410 that had the uh, dual servo mount, the three gear skid plate and a rear brace. You're only going to use that front dual servo mount and that'll allow you to put a chassis mounted servo in there with that pan hard mount of course you'd have to you know swap your links over for a pan hard but it it has got clearance for it it was designed with that in mind still so yes everything is 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 handled to be able to do that we've also been talking recently about some of the other option parts that'll be out for this and those will those will all keep rolling in you'll see more and more things for the for this project the shocks that come on it 90 millimeter sad's but it comes with the hard anodized shock body so a bit of a, a nice respect there it's got the soft springs all the way around the truck's pretty light and, but it does it flexes well super controlled with the weight down low the portals super nice and like i said it's got 37 percent overdrive the lightweight transfer case gears are 21 percent, and then it's got the standard portal gears in the rear and the overdrive up front so that's how you get to that total number. Ring and pinions are still the same front and rear at the uh, 30 tooth ring gear and eight tooth pinion. Um, let's see, what, flat rail say it isn't so, right? <laughs> I already worked on that one. Yeah, I know, we got there. <laughs> I knew that was gonna be a question. Yeah, yeah, the whole time. Uh, the links, like we mentioned, it's got the high clearance or you know bent rear lower links. Also angled. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, oh yeah, the skid plate is an angled skid. It's a new skid plate for us. It's not the standard VFD skid. This one actually takes and it lowers the VFD down into the skid even further. So it's it's nearly on the very bottom of that skid plate. It's got a six degree angle to it from the chassis. One other thing is that since the VFD, you know, that motor, the top shaft is all in line. If you put it all down there at six degrees, it'll push that motor a long ways down. So we actually took and uh, mounted the VFD in the skid plate at a three degree angle. So it doesn't push the motor as far down, keeps it in a nice spot and it's nice and protected, but keeps the weight real low. So we didn't have to raise it all up to keep it out of the way. We just kind of did a, an interesting design there with a compound angle, not something we've, I don't know that I've seen that before. So it was fun to, fun to get that worked in there. Let's see the body post mounting. They've got separate body post mounts in the rear and then the front is a cross brace and you can move those all around in through the shock tower mounting. So, you know, flipping around to the front, to the back, lower it, raise it. Body posts themselves are adjustable as well. And then in the rear, those separate mounts, they can actually be taken off there and this cross brace here just behind the skid has got holes across it that match that same pattern. So if you're using a cab only design, that gives you a place to be able to mount that so you can put a body post or pin through it and easily mount a cab only option. That was something that has worked out well. I had been running a power wagon body for quite a while and that's the that's the setup that I was using on mine personally. Did you talk about metal motor plates and all the upgrades right there? Uh, so yeah, like he's, the, the VFD, <laughs> It's a, it's a super high spec build. It's not been spec like this in any of our other kits so far. Lightweight motor plate, it's the machined lightweight version. We had the machined regular version in the VFD in the Pro, uh, but this one, lighter weight there. The spur gear cover is new. It's actually a super compact, low profile. It's all tucked really close up into that. So it's got lots of clearance for your servo, no matter no matter what server you're running, you should have clearance. That That's hard to say, of course, because some servos are, are pretty big, but we haven't found any that had a clearance issue with that setup now, being that it's it's tighter than it ever has. Was it just the upper wing? 
leaks anyway. Yeah, you can adjust things out, but you have enough clearance there that even those tail happy servos should be should be just fine. It does include the uh, 20 millimeter, 25 spline servo horn in the box. So that's there. The lightweight gears in there, you cut like, I can't remember if it was two, I think it was two ounces out of the whole, whole set of them. Uh, no slipper in this one. It's got the aluminum slipper, aluminum slipper eliminator, just like we had in the, the VS410 Pro, uh, the, the ultra of those. So locked out there, comp style. If you want to force it into something, go for it. Lightweight gears in a comp truck like this with how light that they usually are, probably going to be just fine. Estimated weight without battery? Without battery. Um, I should have just brought a scale in. I guess I don't really have an easy scale to bring in here. We call this text brand or something. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll ask what the guys are. I know what mine is I'll with the battery, that. but the, uh, and, you know, I guess without wheels, tires, and everything, it might be a, uh, a little bit easier. Can you convert it to straight axle? You easily could convert it to straight axle. The uh, servo on axle mount would bolt up to the straight axle without an issue, as far as I'm aware. Um, everything else, all the link geometry, all of that would be the same. It would just, of course, lower your ride height. The shocks do come with all three of the shock rod ends. So if you wanted to put the plus fives on there to try and regain a little bit of ground clearance, you could easily do that. Uh, as, as an option. But yeah, if you wanted to, to swap straight axles into here, I don't think you would really have any, uh, any troubles doing that. Even the steering clearances and all that, I think you've got plenty of room and it should be pretty, pretty easy to serve on an axle mount available separately. It will be available separately, it, not today, but soon. Brandon responded. He's like, you have my car. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, he said five pounds. That's that's probably pretty close. Uh, low CG chassis and portals is God's will. I but so I've been running my truck, you know, like this setup with portals for for quite a while. Having the knuckle weights on it out of the box is a nice bonus. You know, I threw the brass weights in the front of mine, but the VFD is super low. I've got a Fusion Pro in this one. Also, Fusion Pro drops right in on the standard VFD skid plate. Sometimes you have to shave like a millimeter off of the passenger side upper link mount. You don't have to do that on this. There's just less things in the way. The skid plate's a lot more uh, minimal. So no clearance issues at all. Drops right in. Still 540 motor length is what you'll need. But diameter, since that pro was a little fatter, um, there's still, there's no concerns there. But 540 length is still what you're going to be after. Of course, we've discussed a little bit about the stubby version of the VFD coming out, and this is going to support that in uh, some pretty interesting ways. The skid plate has an extension here on the, let's see if I can get it. Wait a second. So this extension here that bolts on separately with these two little screws right there. And there's a short version of it for the stubby. So you'll still be able to protect your revolver, especially since they're the, you know, the most vulnerable style, but that will allow you a lot more room in front of the transmission behind the axle. So some of the like behind the axle steering mounts that. Plus it's removable. We, you're trying to remove every bit of weight. Yeah. If you wanted to take that off anyway and just, you know, not use protection, that's so, on you. Someone want a view of the transmission. Um, this one might be a little bit easier to show there, but the transmission, let's see. So we don't spec using the covers that normally are used on the VFD. So we, they're included if you wanted to run them, but you don't run those on here. And then this is the new tray here on the side. It just gives you an area that you can mount. Like I've got my receiver mounted and the fusion power switch mounted on that little tray. Uh, I've also seen a couple of the guys here run their real small comp batteries, like the 450s on that if you wanted. The aluminum sliders that come on here, they're the width of just about like a, a cliffhanger here. On my other truck up here, I've got the Coyote body, which is a little bit narrower. Um, and on mine, I have actually just kind of modified those sliders on, you know, taking the outside portion off to, to run the narrower body. You can do whatever you want there. Yeah, this, this one's a little dirty from this weekend's comp, but this is a early version of the stubby. 
You can see my my revolver sitting down underneath of there. And then you can see that little <laughs> the little version. It's kind of cute of the skid plate extension. Now you can see the uh, servo and axle mount that is changed up a little bit from the other one on there. And that is something that you'll see before long also. Wheelbase, uh, right in that 12, 3, 12, 5 range. You know, I haven't measured this one exactly. Mine here is uh, right at like 12, 6, because I've got some homemade links on there that I've put a little bend in and moved around and, you know, kind of gone here and there. But that VFD stubby is a cool little setup as well. Be nice to have the options depending on what you want to run. Not everyone wants to run revolvers though, so we get that. VRD stand for VRD. That's a great question. <laughs> it's Vanquish Research and Design. Vanquish Racing Development. Vanquish yeah. Racing Development. Vanquish. You mean all kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> <laughs> We make toy cars and then we figure out how to name them later. Will of winch servo. Mike, will of winch servo fit. Uh, so winch servo stuff, I did run one in my comp truck before and I had a little mount that went up on top with the servo on axle that comes out of the box with the full compression there, that winch servo would be up pretty tall. So there is some options for it. If you wanna run the dual servo mount with the chassis mounted servo, it's super easy, it will drop right in, um, but there'll be some solutions that you can do depending on what setup you're wanting to run. Class one or class two? This will be a class two ready because class two allows the angle skid. So that is that is why this will be pushed into class two. It's made to clear 475 tires, things like that. But, uh, you know, class one option would have to be something down the road where we do a, a non-angled skid and change up profiles or, you know, come with tires who knows what what that could be down the road if if we decide to go that route well things like the rails and skid be available separately uh pretty much everything will be available separately you know in its own in its own way so a lot of the parts will be here very soon uh some of the parts will be will be more down the road depending on what they are but yeah, so you know we'll we'll support the truck, all those things. The bumpers will be something that I'm sure will be an easy option for other people as well. They're a molded bumper, front and rear, bolt in with the standard bolt pattern on each side. The front stays pretty short, straight out. The rear has got an offset. Actually, you can see between these two here. In the manual, it tells you to install it this way, which the offset goes down slightly, but you can take and flip it over and then run it like I have it there where it goes up. So depending on your body, how the, it fits body lines, swapping that bumper front to rear or top to bottom, however you want to say it, up to down can be helpful. But it's just a super easy, it's just a, a personal preference thing on tuning. It also comes with a pretty sweet sticker sheet, comp stance guys all over it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, big sticker sheet there. It's got all kinds of fun logos. VRD Carbon. VRD is the name of the platform. <clears throat> so like VS410, this is the VRD. Carbon is the spec of this particular build. So it comes with the carbon rails. We're super, uh, you know, unique and clever with our naming. So this is the carbon version. <laughs> Uh, let's see. 540 or 550. This is this is going to be a 540 capable, just like all the VFDs. 540 capable is what you need to stick with. Um, of course, if you you can go shorter, you can go with like the revolver size. But 540 is going to be your maximum length. Fusion Pro is 540 length. That would be um, available there. So, got some new partners on there as well. Going to be overall just a nice, great big sticker sheet with all kinds of logos that you can use up also comes in a did we bring all the boxes in uh no i thought we did i did not <clears throat> brandon told me to and i forgot we failed well, yeah <laughs> um going to need a hand-drawn picture of you and your love 
Oh uh, yeah, I can I can I can write you all notes to your significant others. Is is uh, why you need this? It's a good cause. Yeah, <laughs> good Josh Thede cause. <laughs> uh, but this truck really does really. It's a great performer. We've been driving them. We've really been liking them. We've got our our local series here that you know. There's a good handful of us that have been testing them or versions of them for for quite some time. And of course, my comp truck, even my uh, my nationals trucks this year, like my Porsche, was a a version of it. We have a flat box. skid. We have a box on the way. I see that. I see him in, incoming. VRD equals Vanquish Rock and Roll. <laughs> hey, like that. that one works. <laughs> so, thank you, Mike. Just remember, instead of asking permission, you only live once. So. <laughs> you guys forget a box? Oh, our little delivery boy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, so it comes in a you know compact little little kit box there. So you can I think you could smuggle this into your house pretty easily. A new jacket. Yeah. It's just it's getting cold out. You're gonna be wearing hoodies. I think you can you can get it. Okay, so we have to sell hoodies now. Ooh, we're working on it. <laughs> I think we were picking those last week. Josh, are you doing a live build on Friday with it? Yes. You Friday. already did one. Well, I did that for a video. I'll, I'll make a baller buy one and then I'll build Dude. it for him. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, VXT2s, I, like I said, I put the two stage foams in here and uh, it's just a super solid, easy to build. The instructions work great. There was one typo in there we caught. I have a video that explains it. We had one screw length that is said wrong, but it, the included lengths are correct. So note that. Pretty sure I need this. You all need this kit. Uh, will the VFD stubby come as a conversion kit or a complete setup? Uh, it will be a conversion kit. So if you have this truck, you'll just you'll pick it up and it'll actually come. It comes with a, a new cross brace for the front that helps get the front mounts all tied in. It's a nice little cross brace Brandon did. Uh, Brandon was the one who pushed on that stubby setup the hardest. So he uh, he came up with a nice design for that. Looks really good. Will it be better performing probably getting all the servos down too? And yeah, you know, you are gonna take, if you go to that stubby, it will allow you, if you'd like, to take and move your servo from on top of the axle to behind it. Without doing that stubby, you can't really do that just because there isn't enough room behind the axle and in front of the transmission. So, you're gonna come back with an eight hole B lock. Well, we kind of have the riot now, oh, right? Anytime soon. Well, yeah, we do have the riot. It's, eight it's plastic, but it's eight, or is it seven? It might be that weird number. <laughs> Amy's getting some, some got sent today. We only have a limited amount for the first batches because we did airship these kits in. Yep. So, but A main will have, we'll have some of them soon. Uh, most, most will be direct at this point or through dealers that order. So, <clears throat> They, you know, they won't be at a main today like they have been in the past. They'll be there tomorrow. They ship today. Oh, yeah. So they'll have them tomorrow. And then however long it takes them to get them added to their site. Will the alloy knuckle weights be available separately? Uh, so the the cast knuckle weights will be available separately. I'm not sure if those will be real soon. I, I can't recall. They're not that. on the way yet. They're not on the way yet. I no. don't think so yet. Um, but we will be making them available. Yeah. So those will be available. And then, of course, there are the same design as the brass ones. So they will be less expensive than the brass, but they aren't as heavy either. So just kind of be up to you on which what you know is worth to you, which one you want to go with. The 65 grams for these versus 86 for the same one, but in brass. Do you have that truck again? The other one, the other truck. So it's uh, it's the same design as that the low offset version of the cover. The only difference is is that this one uses the standard 2.5 millimeter cap head screw on the top, where the the low offset version is countersinked and comes with the uh, flathead screws. So still a hex drive, but a you know a countersunk head for the screw, so you can run even lower offset wheels. Granted, I've got the uh, KMC impacts on my truck here with 225s. So 225s won't clear on all wheels, but with the impacts and most of the 0.8 inch wide wheels, you can clear a 225 on these F10 portals with those knuckle weights. 
So, you know, and then other brands may, may vary, but with those wheels, the VXT twos, I'm about nine and a half inches, uh, outside the tire, outside the tire. Weight bias front to rear. I, I don't have it on the scale, but again, I've got, you know, I'm a little bit forward of the, where the front links sit, basically how I've got mine set up here currently. Um, Someone was asking about Sir Melford dig. So since class two doesn't allow dig, this skid plate is a, a super low profile. It got the transmission as low as possible. So this doesn't, won't run the VFD dig without additional modification. If uh, it would be hard to make something. It probably wouldn't be hard, but it, it's not something that we've done because of this. Um, and then I noticed a comment in here about <laughs> the, uh, given guys like brazen or it's those guys who run for the money, which actually we, we contacted some of those guys early in, or here very recently to get them trucks as option stuff. We, we would rather have those guys on board making other parts or option parts or a chassis, whatever it is for the truck. So we're not, we're, we would rather work with people rather than uh, try, you know, they, they're big, those guys, people love options. Even if this is perfect for one guy out of the box, somebody else is going to want something different. So there's those guys are going to see stuff. They're going to make stuff. We're not we're not trying to make it hard on anybody. Um, uh, Can I pay you to buy me one and build it on Friday Night Live. <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, how wide is it? Like I said, this one here. I'm at nine and a half inches outside of tire to outside of tire with the VXT2s. Your tire wheel offset foam package will vary, of course, or could vary, of course. And so your width, I don't, I don't know exactly where you're going to be at, but this has been pretty close to how I've been running mine. I think that truck, I'm uh, 350 hubs, but beyond that, I've, I'm always pretty close in that in that range. There's brazen scale. Hello, Brett. <laughs> uh, do the shocks come pre-assembled? The shocks come with the lower cartridge pre-assembled. If uh, that means the, the X rings and spacers on the bottom side, I already have the snap ring installed. So you will have to put your, you know, shock. What is the, you, the, the step? What's semi assembly? Right. What's the sh shock shaft? I couldn't think of that word. Uh, you'll have to assemble your shock shaft with the some the, assembly required. Yeah, uh, if you wanted to, and you wanted to pull the lower cartridge out or anything like that, you could always do that as well. I think I use the Nipix A0 snap ring pliers. They're the smallest one for it. Works best for that size. So if you're looking for that, Nipix <clears throat> A0 or J0. J0 I think is a 90 degree version. The axles are plastic. Yep. If you want aluminum, we have you know aftermarket parts for that. Right. So yeah, the uh, F, these are the F10 axles, basically, as you guys have seen them previously. The Other than the addition of a servo on axle mount, nothing else has changed uh, on the axles themselves, other than the fact that now it does have two different portal gear ratios out of the box. This is the first truck that we've included two portal ratios. Uh, let's see. Uh, See, any recommendations on how to stop breaking portal axle shut? I, I don't, I have not had much break. I broke a pin in mine not too long ago, uh, but I've got my steering stops taken off so I can steer way past the typical operating range. If you don't you're, hear about brakes very often. Yeah, if you're pushing operating range of the, the universal with steering angle, that could be the, the biggest cause. Or, you know, beyond that, I, I drive too much power and things like that and usually don't have any issues. Josh is loving flat rail chassis. The world is ending. <laughs> it's not a scale truck. I don't like them for scale trucks. I still agree it's per not scale. But for this performance world, I do agree. They are a lot of fun. I do love competition and just, uh, you know, like going out and testing with them and just driving as hard as we can, trying to do lines. We actually took a day where... Four of us went out, drove 
some test trucks back to back trying to make some decisions and that was a great day mm -hmm. so I hope this make a lot of decisions too yeah were we i think we were at folsom lake and i think there's some other people out there crawling as well and we were trying to <laughs> it was pretty hard to not look like we were just testing stuff like that so but. the f10 aluminum housings will fit axles yes so does the only thing i can't remember is if we have that extra hole on the back side for the servo on axle mount you might not need that one or we have I'd have to double check that. I have not ran the aluminum axles on mine personally. It definitely fit the new shorty. Yeah, we'll definitely fit the new behind the axle steering mount. So we'll get into all those details over as things keep going as well. Oh, there's a timer. It's 3.30, people. So Facebook. Uh, Facebook people, you can uh, jump over to the Vanquish YouTube page if you'd like to continue with the discussion of this. Thanks for joining us over there. But yeah, just search the Vanquish YouTube and... You'll, uh, you'll find the second half hour of the show. Ready? Yep. All right. Um, so good. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. This makes, this makes Road to Nationals a lot easier. Well, if you guys remember when I was doing Road to Nationals, I didn't work much on my class two. And it wasn't because, it was actually because I got to work on it at work. <laughs> so uh my class two came together real quick because it was mainly already done i just had to put some uh finishing touches on it it's also why i didn't get a video for my class two stuff out but you know we'll get there but now you can post it now i can post it which just means i have to finish editing it but the uh with the new cliff dangler body from <laughs> this is a cliffhanger hanger it's actual pro line cliffhanger body the width fits perfectly on there the length is actually pretty much pretty much spot on as well um obviously a super popular body one that we, we can't ignore people wanting to use i also have the cab only version of it and for those that didn't see uh that that mid-span cross brace does allow you to to use to mount cab only style bodies it's super helpful if uh it's, not, it's hard to mount cab only at times some of the same plastic sliders but they're not uh, uh they're they are aluminum so they're bent metal aluminum style sliders or aluminum sliders not style uh bent you know out that's also where the battery is generally intended to be run it comes with two velcro straps if you wanted velcro on both sides we just included both of them. I run it on one side only. Dan actually mounted it on the side of the transmission today. Brandon and Dan have been running. If you run in really small batteries, uh, 450s, 650s, 800s, you can pretty much get it down between the side of the transmission and the chassis. So that's not going to be for everybody. But if you really, if you like those real, real small comp style batteries, you can get them super low. The uh, Chassis's got some little windows here on the side, which is hard to see. Yeah, you can see in there now. Um, in there, you can access the drive shaft screw because this tray kind of blocks access to that. So opened up that side of it there. You can get your driver in through there if you need to pull the pin out for your drive shaft. So you don't have to try and remove the whole transmission just to do that if, uh, if you're worried about it. It is tight over there with the four link and all of that. So you just have to make sure you, you note that when you're doing, if you're, you know, for clearances, there is some screw lengths to pay attention to in the manual. If, when you get it, just pay attention to what it lists for those, uh, for those sizes, other than page 20 of the manual, <laughs> the upper link screws in the front end needs 20 millimeters, not 16. Pretty sure it's page 20. Yes. Page 20. <laughs> And it's, uh, yeah, the upper link screws at the axle side. Should sure I remember all that? Yes. Well, you can refer to either this video or the video that I put out. Will the twin VFD fit? Uh, no, the VFD twin, this, this is not made for that one. Basically because this is made for class two, you know, or just that style of, uh, of running. You can't run dig. You can't run selectable overdrive any longer. So we just kept it to the, the most simple, the lightweight, Specked it out with all, all of the good stuff in that way, just to make sure. Now I'm sure people will figure things out, 
mount all kinds of stuff in there in any way, but that is something to note. The bolt pattern on the side of the chassis is not the same bolt pattern as we've run in previous skid plates. It is a different width now the, as far as the separation between the lower link screws, just as an FYI, in case you were uh, thinking about trying to mount a different type of skid in there right off the bat, it is a different spacing worth noting. The VFD is supported up in the front with a couple of new mounts. So you'll notice that. Uh, yeah, I think that those are kind of the, the all the big picture things to note as far as that goes. Beyond that, the flexibility of these type of trucks and however you're going to build them, there's tons of tons of options. I'm sure you guys will do things that we didn't didn't consider or didn't think of at the time or never got around to. But I think we need special guest Brandon. I guess they don't like me. Brandon. <laughs> but Brandon did a majority of the work with Josh on this. Yep. Uh, yeah, Brandon, I gave Brandon a, a very well polished package. <laughs> yeah. Brandon, Brandon has described it differently when I handed him the SolidWorks. Uh, but he went through and, and did all of the, the polishing and finishing and all most all of the hard stuff. So that uh but today, like last week, last live stream, I was not feeling not feeling well. This week it was Brandon. He's got Otherwise, he would have also joined. Uh, Brandon tells the secrets. <laughs> I do pretty good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he was getting really upset with me. My God. I always have to be thousands of miles away, too. Why must Vanquish products keep producing trucks people want? <laughs> Isn't that the goal? It's because we want them first. That's and usually what we do. We make what we want. This one... I think it might have been more than two years ago. Brandon wanted a uh, carbon chassis VS410 at the time. And he came up with a profile and I cut it out for him. Um, and I think I think we still have that kicking around somewhere. We like Once we decided to actually make it a project, we're like, okay, I think we still have one of the first versions still here. But it looks a far cry from what this one is. So I think it might have been, uh, the Phoenix was out, but just barely. So it's been a while. Right there, will Phoenix body fit, or do you have to run a new body? Um, I have four dice there, at least. <clears throat> yeah, anything's so possible. Four dice and the Phoenix have the same profile, rear bed and all that. I, I know Michael ran a Phoenix on his for the comp setup um, originally. Now, I've, of course, got bumpers and cage and all that. But, you know, yeah, it sits about... It sits about on there. Of course, my sliders are just ever so slightly interfering, but of course I got body posts and things like that, that are interfering in the back, but yeah, it does, it does fit. So, uh, will center front pumpkin axles work? No, since it runs a VFD transmission, you have to run an offset axle. You cannot run center output axles, but the F10s are better than all of those other axles anyway. So, is this one two ninety nine? Oh, <laughs> we're we're putting a lot into this kit, so right. no. This one is not two twenty nine. This one's four twenty nine. Uh, but it's we did this one as a high spec kit, kind of like the Pro originally. It's got all of the good stuff just already: the machine motor plate, machine gears, and the transmission. Uh, you know, the option parts, the better shocks. If you even just go and look at what the cost of like the, the lightweight gears are for this and the, the machine motor plate, shock bodies, the, the gears and everywhere, we put we put good stuff in here. And carbon fiber frame rails, those are not an inexpensive option. So there is definitely the ability to make this kit uh, less expensive, but we, we ended up going with a kind of a high spec, you know, style of it just because it's something that we enjoy ourselves as well and you know later down the road if it's uh, something that people like and embrace then of course we we could cut we could cut stuff out of it to make it cheaper if that was the that was the end goal <clears throat> let's see uh does the chassis have a vp logo somewhere art that's a fantastic observation and one that should have been made several months ago, but 
Did you overlook that? We we didn't do that. It's a, that's a miss. It's a miss on our part. <laughs> you did Cerro on Mount Axel for them. Um, those are coming. Second ops finishing. We already have the prototypes done plated, so they're coming pretty quick. Oh, got the behind the one. Yeah, it gives us kind of a yes. on axle mount. Well, this if that one's gonna be different. We don't have that one. This one, yeah, this one is a, a we will, molded option that will also be available. But and you know, work in a number of pretty easy to, to run setups. I need this kit with machined axles. You can. Yeah, we we have this bundling ability. It's called a cart, <laughs> <laughs> built into our website. It's super easy to use. Just buy the kit and the axles are on the website. We, ex right there. we exchange money for some of the items on occasion. Right. <laughs> But the behind the axle mount. That that behind the axle mount, the one he's talking about. That one is uh, is coming very soon. So you'll see that one here uh, before long. Uh, so if you want a logo, second back. If you want a logo, again, it comes with a big sticker sheet. <laughs> well, I think you're saying how we validate the knockoffs with no logo. You apply. Yeah, we we may have to look into. Uh, it's see, easy. But, yeah, that's what's great about this yeah. kind of project. We, we can add that to the next batches. We can have it screened on there, something like that as well. Maybe we'll go that route. Incision drive shafts or ISD plastics? ISD plastic drive shafts on this. Uh, they're a lot lighter. That's something that we've been running on a lot of ours, and they've they've been working really well. So we didn't do the, the incision steel ones like we did in the Pro. So that is one difference there. But we really did try and keep weight out of this thing in a lot of ways. The you know, narrow profile upper links, the lightweight machine gears and the transmission were a big deal. Even the plastics up top got lighter. We yeah. thinned them all out. We thinned the, thinned the chassis braces up as much as we could to try and keep excess weight out of areas that it didn't need to be. The chassis does have the taper, so wide in the center, narrow at the ends. That was That's something that we went through in the instructions and have it in a way that should be pretty easy for people to, to understand while they're assembling. That can be, that can, trip some people up when building a flat rail they bolt on a skid plate and then the, the cross braces don't match the width people just don't understand that they need to flex things we put this together in a way that it should be should make people pretty, pretty happy. oh yeah um are the pearl covers a coated brass or steel or something like that they're uh I think they're a zinc alloy yeah, of some sort. Right. It's basically a melted down Hot Wheels car. So <laughs> uh, it's not quite as dense as a brass. So that's why these weigh slightly less than the same version of the brass cover. Like the, uh, these are 65 grams. Those are 86. If I'm going off memory there. That gives also more tuning options. Yeah. Having it the so, same weight wouldn't mean anything. You know, and it's, it's just a, an easy option that we were able to get in there to, again, just try and keep it performing its best out of the box. And that's a repeat question, but wheelbase. Right at that, you know, pretty standard 12, 12, three range. Of course, depending on where you're at and ride height and all that, 12, three, 12, five. So every kit comes with two Hot Wheels. Bonus. Yeah, exactly. Mashed, mashed up. Yeah, reconstituted. It might be 10 Hot Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's see. I need that logo and nothing else compares. Yeah. It's nice to have a little logo on the, on the portals, on the portal covers. I'm glad to, glad to be able to get that on there, but the brass ones have cooler logos. Is that cause Brandon did that? Yeah. So the parts you did, you didn't bring right. your company. That was, that was the outcome of that testing day that we had at the lake. So those, that was, uh, that was the fun, fun thing we came with there. Drift wheel time. I, you talked about, I that. did remember. Jim reminded me, or he was reading comments before the live stream started, and he did remind me, and I did, I did go grab two of them before the live stream. I didn't get a chance to do any other work uh, on like getting them cleaned up. I've got a box of them that are still sitting on the shelf back there, but these were the. I don't remember how long did those. How long did you do these before I came? I don't know, a couple of years. Yeah, so twenty. 14 or so like, some of those went to like the president ferrari went on his desk and stuff yeah i remember you guys are trying to remember the brand i think it was not inky it was a uh, motega motega something like that motegi yeah something like yeah it was uh but yeah i did uh did go dig a couple of those out just five just, minutes before the just stream. Like show 
But right. you don't have nothing ready, so. No, I know. We don't have anything ready. We'll figure out what we got to do. See if uh, if you guys can get a hand, your hands on. We'll come with straight axles. No, this this one is portal only. There's only one spec of this right now. Uh, down the road, if they're something that takes off well, then other options down the road are a possibility. But this, for now, you're only going to see. A this is a vehicle that like always will continue development. Yeah. As we learn and do more new things, and we wanted to go with what we felt was best for it. Um, this is going to perform excellent. Yeah, the F10 portals do so well, keeping the motor super low with the VFD, including the knuckle weights. It performs really well. It, it's not something I've. Steve said 2015. Oh, there you go. Okay, sounds about right. <laughs> I think Steve's watching. The, uh, but yeah. For now, you'll you'll see the one spec of this. So as you see it, if you want to modify to your heart's content with your own versions, yes. We also sell those. Yeah, we you we that is a nice thing about having the F10s in both a portal and a straight. But we also have the plastic axles too. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, yeah, we should still be in stock. Yeah. I would buy some lunar difference. Yeah, there's not very many. We'll figure out what we're going to do. Definitely got to keep some for the shelf and dust all of them yeah. <laughs> it's been fun to have the studio set up to put some of the random things that have been kicking around random shelves stuff i made that never finished yeah <laughs> uh yes they are available now by the way they're on the website the first batch is a was an air shipment batch so it's not going to be as there's only a, a certain amount of supply more are definitely coming. You'll see them before long, but I can't I can't guarantee how long they will be available on this batch. Uh, let's see. The constant. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they, you know what? What's the I don't even have any tattoos. What's those fake tattoos? Henna's or something? Yeah, that's right. Why don't we should get those and like put them in boxes? Wait, I think henna you still have to like put on. I don't know how that works. <laughs> well, back there we can get them wet and put my arms. Oh yeah, <laughs> perfect. Calvin. Uh, let's see. Any chance of a skid that for the VFT twin? We should do well, trucks of fortune and put drift wheels in trucks of fortune. Yeah. Well, just be like, <laughs> why did I get drift wheels in a truck of fortune package? But then be more like RC four drive. <laughs> Random items. <laughs> just whatever was in the warehouse. Uh, do you know the exact number for the first batch? Yes, I do. Um, neither... <laughs> I know it exactly. But you, you wrote the PO, maybe. Yeah, I, th uh, I think Brandon maybe got. You told him write the PO. I told him to write it. Make it so. Get them coming. Mm -hmm. But any more questions? Yeah. Do you guys have any any other questions on the platform before we end? We got a little bit. We got ten minutes left. About. We get through what we can. I'll scroll see if we missed one. Yeah, with flat rail chassis, you'll you'll know what to expect. But it goes together so well; it really does, and it performs great out of the box. You can the tuning ability is there. Are yeah. links the same length as a regular four tens? Uh, you'll find the links are slight slightly different. So you will need uh, you will need these links specifically for this. So not exactly. I am late. What is this? So start over. Okay. Thanks for joining everybody. <laughs> Today we have the new VRD Carbon. <laughs> uh, again, though, for anyone who didn't, the VRD is the chassis setup, like VS410. This is the VRD. That's the platform name. And uh, Carbon is just the spec of this one. Like the Phoenix or the Four Dice, this is the Carbon. Just to help you figure out our naming convention, that is how we went for this one. Have you verified all J concept bikes fit? You know how important this is. You know what? I I only own 10 J concepts bodies and they're all the Lloyd. So I I uh, don't I can't say anything beyond that one. Will these be on sale for Black Friday? If we, I don't think so, but oh on sale? No. You will not see a, a reduced price on these for quite some time. Um, but will they be available by Black or on Black Friday? Yes. Maybe. They're Probably. Still available. <laughs> Maybe. 
Uh, yeah. So the chassis is servo and axle only. Nope. The chassis will suggest or will accept chassis mounted servo also. Uh, there'll be a, a kit that you can just put on there if that's the way that you want to go. It was designed around it to make sure that the clearances were there. But out of the box, it is set up as servo on it. Next will be the VRD Titanium. I'm in titanium chassis. Might be heavier. It, it would probably it would be heavier, but it would be titanium. So you use titanium links. And titanium is cool. You know, flame it, make it colored. Yeah. My all the purple ones. My uh, anodizing solution. But I think that's about covering it for this one. It's been fun. We're glad that it's out there. If you guys have questions, of course, you can comment on the video. Also, have another video up with details on stuff. If you'd like to, did you release that? Yeah, it's up. It's up now. So, you'll you can go see that. It's got all kinds of close ups and things. If you were trying to get some more information on it, will the VFD get unit fit? Could they modify it? Uh, out of the box, I don't believe that it will fit. I think that there's actually going to be some lower link clearance issue because we really did took this transmission and slam it down into that skid. I mean, you can always use spacers and lift yeah. stuff. There's it's, always a way. Yeah, there's a, when there's a will, there's a way. But this one really does just hug everything down in there. So out of the box, it's not made to be a bolt-on option part. But we know that people was this will, the delayed item from last Friday. Yes. Yes, it was. Say <laughs> <laughs> choose that one. You can. There's not much to update on the Ripper. I'm still working on it. Until it's, it's done, it's done. Not it's a done. project that is being worked on. It's not one that exists yet. Check back in two it, years. The existing CAD is not two years. Yeah. <laughs> but Are you there... should keep asking Josh questions yeah. daily. Oh, uh, yes, there are comp stand stickers on. There's actually six of them here. So comp stand stickers are on there. Also, some other new uh, partners on there. The KMC Falcon, anti-gravity batteries, Dometic, Yokohama, we rock 74 weld portals magnaflow all the partners on there now there you go that's it for this week unless you guys have anything else that is going to do it appreciate all you guys for joining it was a good stream we're excited for this project they're on the website go buy one maybe hit it see you guys